Hey, I'm John. This is Mr. G's Workbench. If you're a first time visitor, thanks for stopping by. If you're a return visitor, thanks for coming back. This is going to be part two of the Kitty Hawk SU30 build. And to remind you where we're at in part one, we got the cockpit built and installed into the upper fuselage half. And we also got the engines built and installed in the lower fuselage half along with the nose gear bay. The plan for today is to get the main uh, gear bays painted and installed. We're also going to get the intakes uh, painted and installed and we'll get the two fuselage halves together. So let's get started right away. Let's dive right into step 12. Step 12 is going to have us assemble the, uh, the main gear bays which I've done. There wasn't anything really spectacular to, to highlight on camera. The bays are, are well detailed. They feature a lot of conduits already molded in. The three parts went together well. One thing to note is Kitty Hawk reversed these two parts in, uh, in their directions. C61 in the instructions is really C60 and vice versa. 60 is 61. Uh, you won't be able to, uh, to assemble them otherwise because of the way the tabs and the parts are located. So they're done. Painted them with uh, MRP US Navy Gray Blue, which is uh, number 105 in their paint line. So those are done. I recommend that you use the lower fuselage half as a jig to, to put the three pieces together because the only thing you have is these tabs and slots. I've also, as, as I showed you, the one thing I, I went ahead and did was I installed the cockpit into the upper fuselage half. I also installed the bulkhead from the radar assembly. Everything tabbed together well. I also had to install the refueling probe bay is E6. I had to put that in here in order to, to get this, this bulkhead installed. Everything fit together well. Uh, I'll be honest with you, I went to test fit the upper and lower fuselage halves together and I had no end of trouble with it and I couldn't understand why. I got to the point where I took my Proxon app and started grinding off plastic on the bottom as well as on the top of the, uh, the nose gear bay because I assumed there was a problem where the something right here was in this area right here was keeping the two halves from coming together. What I found the problem to be in, in, in the long run after a lot of, of fettling around was that the front half of the cockpit wasn't seated all the way in the upper fuselage half. So I went in, I started kind of flexing everything until I, I got a little play. I gave it another little push and sure enough when I went and put the two halves together they fit fine after that. So just a word of caution, when you install this uh, cockpit into the upper fuselage half, make sure that it's pushed all the way in as far as it'll go. And my guidance that, well, what led me to, to understand that, that this front half was not installed all the way in was when I went to put the uh, instrument panel combing over the front, the, the instrument panel in the front cockpit was, was too low. But as soon as I, I got that little bit of flex and pushed up just a notch, it, it seated up against the, the top of the combing. And then when I put the two halves together, they weren't bulging and they, they aligned perfectly. So off we go. Step 14. We're going to try and get these fuselage halves together. As a side note, uh, these here, uh, B72, I'll be honest with you, before I assembled, uh, installed the cockpit into the upper fuselage half, I did not pay attention to these. They belong inside the cockpit. I believe they're supposed to be black. They don't give you any color reference. Uh, I've looked in a flanker book I have, but I don't see any, any pictures of, of these, but I, I recognize them from seeing them before. I'll install them later on. So right now, we're going to get uh, the upper and lower together. I've got, I've got the uh, gear bays. The main gear bays are installed now. Those engines are in. The nose gear bay is in. So, and we've got the, uh, the upper half. Uh, I don't see this being an issue at this point. As I mentioned before, I had to readjust the, uh, the front end of the cockpit. I've corrected that. I'm ready to put these two halves together. So I'll show you the finished result. All right, we've got the fuselage halves together. The upper and lower went together. 
fairly painlessly once I realized the mistake I had been making with this uh, cockpit assembly. It took me like a half an hour of, of messing around with it before I realized. Once I fixed that, the upper and lower halves went together uh, without issue. Uh, there were no gaps. Uh, if you take your time back here, the, uh, the seam that you see where the upper and lower halves come together, uh, that's going to that's gonna be hidden by the, uh, the stabilizers. When I initially put this together, uh, I had a, a substantial step on this side. I hadn't realized it after I glued it. I guess it had, had kind of separated as it sat. My pinky was the first victim as I, as I went to slice these, uh, these joints apart to redo them. Uh, I redid it. It's pretty close. I'll do some sanding because any work I do on this seam is going to be hidden, like I said, by the, by the vertical stabilizer. So that's not an issue. The seams here and here are going to be hidden. That was well thought out by Kitty Hawk for once. Here's the open engine bay. So here's a close up of what it looks like. Uh, that went up together okay. I got those main gear bays painted and installed. Again, since I used the lower fuselage as a jig, the, the sides all fit together properly. And when you go to install it finally after you paint it, not an issue. The issue is this uh, nose piece up front. Kitty Hawk wants you once again to display this nose uh, pivoted up for maintenance with the radar display showing, which is, uh, you know what? It's not a bad idea. If I had two of these kits, I probably would do it. Uh, what you have to do though, if you want to close it up and fit this piece on to get everything, and once again, it's a butt join, there's no tabs because they don't expect you to close it for some reason. What you're going to have to do to get this to fit properly is there's a, there's a little tab that sticks out of the forward end of the top uh, upper fuselage. You have to clip that tab off, make sure you sand that flush so it's just one straight line. Then before you install this, what I had to do uh, to get this to fit on here properly was I had, to, I had to take my procs on, I had to grind out the detail that they've molded on the inside of this, this piece here. Before I installed it, once again, uh, you have to look ahead in the, uh, in the instructions, it, otherwise it's going to come back to bite you. If you can see here, there's a, there's a shelf here where there's going to be a piece. That's where the IRST sensor goes. You have to go get that piece. And if, if you just follow the instructions step by step, you wouldn't know it until the very last step. And the part you're going to need to complete this is in step 40, finally, H17. I suggest you take H17 now. Tape it up here temporarily so that it's in. It, it sits on the sides, it sits well. And you need to tape it in so that you can get this forward piece. It'll be flush with that H17 once you install it. So tape it on. When you go to grind out the detail on the inside of this piece, it's C31. So after that, a lot of test fitting is to get the top of this C31 to be flush with H17, which that's all one continuous uh, piece of the fuselage. I glued this in. There's going to be there's going to be some uh, some sanding that's going to need to be done just to get everything. I mean, it's fairly lined up, but you're going to have to do a little bit. Uh, I had a couple of housekeeping notes I wanted to discuss on this. In the cockpit, in step five, this the the instrument panel combing is listed as H16, but the one in the instructions looks nothing like this one. Uh, but this is the one they give you. Uh, the one they have would have part A4 installed. It's a little tiny piece that would go on the front and there's no way to put it on this. It, it, like I said, it's not the same part. There's a hose H7 that's going to go in uh, against the, the back wall of the forward cockpit. I haven't installed it yet. Um, I'm sure it's going to be a lot of fun to wedge in here. I probably should have did it, but I didn't know where it went. I had a look at a few pictures before I finally found one where I could see this. It looks like it's some kind of air conditioning hose that comes up and points towards the rear cockpit. I'll get it in at some point. Like I said, I also have those two other small pieces I have to get in. So next is going to come the, uh, the intakes. And before I even get started with the intakes, it was already an issue with it. 
the left intake assembly, A44, there's some kind of molding error. This curve here wasn't molded in. So if you look here, you can see what it looked like and how much material I had to cut off to get it to somewhat match the right hand one. Because that, that curve has to be there to accommodate the, the top half of the main gear bay. Let's keep going with the intakes and I'll show you what we did there. Moving on, before we reach the intakes, I just want to make a note. Step 16 would have you installing the uh, forward instrument panel combing for the cockpit, as well as uh, what I think are defroster pipes for the, uh, the canopy, H15 and H1. Those parts are too delicate to deal with right now. I think the first thing you need to do is get the aircraft itself assembled. So we're going to bypass that and we're going to move to the intakes. So that would be step 17 or 18, depending on whether you want the shutters open or closed. They've uh, designated the shutters B47 in both, but uh, obviously the closed ones, they're not B47. Uh, they have a different number. I think they're 48, if I, if I recall right. I've used the open shutters. I know it's wrong because to have the open shutters, you're supposed to have these, uh, these screens in the up position, and that's... The, the shutters are open to give the engines air while it's still on the ground. I'm going to show the intakes, so I've, I've put those screens down. Uh, it's right there. It's hard to see even with the light. It's right there. Uh, I put the shutters open because they just look a little more delicate. They're well molded, and I just felt that the closed ones looked a little too, too bland. Another issue you're going to find with the, uh, with the intakes See these two holes? Those are for pylons. Remember I told you in, in the last part, there are no pylons provided since there are no weapons provided. So what you're going to have to do and what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some uh, styrene rod and I'm going to just plug those holes and clean it up before I install these. So the other part of this assembly is uh, you have 19, 18, and 16 and the corresponding parts on the other side when you're done. You'll have this. It went together with, with no issue, uh, save for the fact that, once again, Kitty Hawk gives you butt joins for the two uh, intake halves. So as nice as it is that they gave you a separate intake so that it looks reasonable, uh, you gotta put them together and you still wind up having to sand a seam. And I'm gonna be honest, I'm terrible at this. Uh, FOD covers of my friend, but uh, I'm not using them on this one, so I've done my best to sand the inside of this. I, I primed it ahead of time with some Mr. Surfacer. I put them together, uh, and after it dried, I sanded the inside. I rolled up a piece of uh, 220 grit sandpaper, which sounds rough, but the one I used was kind of worn already, and I just kind of run it in and out of the, uh, the front and back of this. And then I took a, a small sanding stick and, you know, did my best to, to get everything kind of cleaned up on, along those seams. It's as good as I'm going to get it. I'm going to hit it again with some primer. And then uh, the intakes I've been painting with, uh, with this MRP 186 uh, light gray. It's like an off-white. So um, I've been using that because it actually looks pretty good. Don't forget to paint... You have to paint this here, this curved section, the, uh, the landing gear bay color. And as I mentioned previously, I think I mentioned previously, I'm using MRP US Navy light gray blue, which is FS35237. It seemed like a good match for the blue gray look that I, I've seen in the photographs and in a book I have on the flanker. So I'm gonna get these painted, I'm gonna get them assembled, and I'm, next time you see this, uh, the intakes should be attached to the lower fuselage and we'll take a look at how everything comes together. I think we're going to be wrapping this up for today. Uh, the intakes are on. Uh, I don't know what happened between dry fitting and uh, installing them. I think the inserts might be the uh, might be to blame. These sat flush when I when I test fitted just the uh, the intake uh, outside parts. They fit just fine. When I went back and installed them with the actual intake tunnels, uh, I wound up with a gap. So what I did is I filled as much as I could with styrene, 
I then filled the, the rest of it with putty. I sanded it. It's as good as I'm gonna get it. I've got that, that piece installed up here. Uh, any gaps I had, I filled with some uh, CA. I waited till everything dried. I sanded it down. I put some white putty in a couple of spots and, and wiped it off just to kind of fill places where there was a, a difference in, in, in the depth of the panel line. Outside of the problems with the, uh, with the intake trunks, um, I'm fairly satisfied with this. I, I would have been happier if, if I would have built this with the nose open, there would have been no issue up front. So I've got that cleaned up as best I can. Uh, I'll probably go back and take a look tomorrow and see if, uh, if there's anything to rescribe. But I think no matter what, I, I, I'm, at, I'm at my ability level in terms of cleaning up these gaps, trying to make them not look like gaps. So that's where we're at. Thanks for stopping by again. Thanks to Jim at Kitmaker for giving us this SU-30 kit to, to tear apart. And uh, thank all of you for stopping in. Thank my, we're up to 52 subscribers. Thank every one of you. If you haven't subscribed yet, why not? Like and subscribe, do me a favor. If you like what you see, give me a thumbs up. If you don't, give me a thumbs down. Leave a comment, tell me why. And uh, it's all fair, all right? So we'll see you next time. I think the next episode we're going to take care of the wings and some of the other stuff that's still not on. The stabilizers and the wings, I think, are mostly going to be it. Uh, I think the other thing we're supposed to do is put the, uh, the gun in the gun bay and close that up, which we'll probably do because I don't think that's going to make much of a difference anyway. All right? So see you all next time. Take care.